Gameaholic here. Playing these games and getting a migraine, turning them into dust like dinos from Endgame. These games are so tough they can't be beat, but it's always entertaining, so have a seat. Screaming and yelling and flipping the bird, he's a gameaholic, haven't you heard? He's got a controller in his hand, trying to get you to understand that these games cannot be beat. So sit back, relax, and grab a can of beer to drink with a friend while he yells at his screen. These games they never end. The game holic is really mean. Do these bad games. Watch your screen to see what I mean. Fuck you, Johnny. Go fuck yourself. Oh man, well fuck me! We're finally here, once again, for the second year in a row, finally, some continuity on this fucking channel, welcome to the summer of SEGA. And I know a lot of you are wondering, well Gameaholic, what are we gonna play for the first month today? Well, if you shut the fuck up, get your finger out of your ass, and stop sticking it in your nose and sniffing it, I'll tell you. For the 30th anniversary of the Sonic franchise, why not go back and play one of the first games I ever played as a kid? When I was four years old, I put this game in my Sega Genesis. It was one of the first two games that I got next to Sonic 2, but it's not Sonic 2. Oh no. Sonic Spinball released in November of 1993. Now since then, Sega's been whoring themselves out once again, you filthy fucking prostitute and bitch have been taking this fucking game and they have ported it to almost every compilation and their grandmother's ass known to man. This game has literally been across every and almost every console that has come after it, with the exception of Nintendo and PlayStation in the mid to late 90s. Other than that, you're a whore and you're everywhere. So today we're going to take a nice, good, thorough look and give a great, in-depth, precisional idea of how I grew up with this game. Let's pop this fucking game in and hopefully Tails Prowler and Knuckles join in for a threesome of fucking fired falling fuckery. Let's pop this piece of shit in. Sonic Spinball? More like Sonic can spin on my balls. So Tails comes flying in on his fucking plane. Apparently this is before he got his air traffic control license, fucking dipshit. So you start off as Sonic. And you start off in like this chemical plant zone. And I can honestly say, the game doesn't look too terrible. Nice backgrounds. Character sprites look great. Point system up on the top. Almost getting eaten by a fucking mechanical, whatever the fuck that is, Godzilla or Shark or Barney's fucking stupid brother, who knows. The controls in the game are super simple. You pretty much just use the D-pad and A or C. Doesn't matter which one you do, they all do the same fucking thing. And of course, if you want to do a barrel roll, not really, but if you want to basically speed off like Sonic the Dick Hog, Press down an A, and you can still do that. Now the point in all three stages is this. You want to collect the Chaos Emeralds. 
after you collect all three in this level of the Chaos Emeralds, you fight a boss. So in each level, you have these little challenges. So in this chemical-looking fucking zone that you're in, that looks like, you know, there was a chemical spill in the United States and nobody knew how to clean it up. Standard. Basically, what you do is, is there's these little challenges. So in level one, you basically have to pull these switches to free up this latch door. Now, when you free up that latch door, you're basically able to spin down one way and spin down another way to get these Chaos Emeralds. If you don't, it sends you right back in and you have to pull the switch again. Fair enough. But why does Sonic move so slow? Maybe it's my Genesis? Maybe it's the game itself? Maybe you're just a bunch of fucking idiots and are watching this in a slow manner. I don't fucking know. And I'm clearly aware that in the options setting, there is a speed that you can alternate. Oh, so I got stuck there. That was great. I got out of there real quick, though. Thanks, Glitch, you bitch. And you go down this mineshaft cart like a fucking Indiana Jones taking a fucking shit in a tube. So for every 20 million points you get, you get an extra life or an extra ball or whatever you want to call it. Okay, fine. But you literally just have to start constantly keep killing enemies, constantly keep fucking slapping into fucking things just to get that 20 million points. You're better off just trying to fucking beat the game on the three lives that they give you. Which is not impossible, but it's hard as shit. Now, what else can I say about this game that hasn't already been said? It's a 30-year anniversary. It came out more or less in the height of Sonic's popularity. He was already the mascot for Sega when this happened. Now, in any given stage, every ring, if you collect every single ring in the stage, it takes you to a special in-level bonus round where you can get extra lives. But don't even try pulling that the fuck off because it's fucking almost impossible. You're always going to be constantly looking around to see where you're missing that one ring. And usually when you end up and go back and fucking do it, you end up fucking dying. So don't even bother. So in between completing each level, you get these bonus stages where you could collect more points you know get you to that 20 million bullshit to get an extra life and they're not impossible but they are a bitch just like amy rose knuckles and your fucking sister's ass they're all a bitch the only difference is one takes it more than the other did I, did I mention the greatest part of this game? And what I mean by greatest part of the game is how long the game is? Huh. You could probably, if you do it right, piss through this game in about 45 minutes. That's right. There is four fucking levels in this game. Four! And every level of this game makes it more of a bitch than the next. The second level, you're in like this fucking volcano level where you got these blue fucking, I don't even know what the hell they are, frog moles who look like Frogger and fucking Sonic's brother, Bananic, who the fuck knows what his name is, took a shit on your fucking face and mocked your porch. When you're in the second level, you have to launch up into these tubes. And you got these little fucking heads that are there that I never understood. Looks like Battletoads fucked Harry and the Hendersons. Now the insane thing is, is each boss is unique. I, I, I'm not gonna knock the game for that. But as soon as you get to level three, holy shit does this game not become harder because you don't have to collect 
three Chaos Emeralds anymore. Oh no, you have to collect five. Five. First three are not that bad to find. The next two, they have tucked away in these fucking shitty ass fucking spots. Oh, Jesus Christ. That take precision and fucking time. And I keep fucking falling. You fucking blue fucking diaper dick eating dick ass bitch. The third level of this game, you look like you're fucking trapped inside of a fucking Sega Genesis console. Sad to say, I'd rather be trapped in a wall behind concrete. So I have to say this fucking shit. Level three in this game was almost impossible to fucking maneuver. But thank the fucking Lord we got out of it. And that boss was a fucking bitch too. But let me tell you. When you get to level four, all fucking bets are off. And this game is nothing but a fucking bitch. You basically gotta get the five Chaos Emeralds and you're in this volcanic Dr. Evil fucking level, whatever the hell you wanna call it, on fucking Mount Diarrhea. But you have to travel all the way into space to fucking fight Eggman. And then basically what you have to keep doing is launching yourself into his fucking capsule, whatever the fuck he's in, to kill his ass. Come on, you fucking piece of shit. Come on! Fucking Jim Carrey dick face. And of course, I fucking die. What else is fucking new? I get fucking launched up and launched out, and that's it. Are you fucking kidding me? And when you die, there's no such thing as continues. Oh no, you only have those fucking extra lives. Because it sends you right back to the fucking first level of the game. This game is a fucking joke. You know, one thing, one thing good I do have to say about this fucking shit heap of fucking dung that hangs from sausage and Barry White's asshole is the music is great. Because it wasn't necessarily Sega. See, here's, here's a funny little history for you when you go to trivia night and you're too busy drinking alcohol and scratching your ass on a fucking height chair. The fact of the matter is, they didn't have the rights to the Sonic music when they did this game 30 years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, I did my research. And the crazy thing is, is the guy who did it. I don't want to mispronounce his name, but I'm probably going to, so unsubscribe and eat my butt. Was Howard Drozen. Howard Drozen worked on a lot of projects with Sonic. Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, games like the Ooze and Comic Zone. Okay, fine. But get this. The Howard Drozen. Great music composer also worked with people like Beyonce, Wiz Khalifa, and Rod Stewart. So where's the Sonic fucking Colors Jay-Z crossover we were asking for? I guess nobody thought that, you know, nobody would be crazy in love for fucking Sonic, right? Maybe the Rolling Stones would come out of fucking retirement for the fucking 84th time and fucking do a soundtrack for this game. You work with a really good composer, yet you don't think to do any fucking music for our video games? 
Fuck your celebrity status shit. And fuck Sonic Spinball. That's right, I said it. Fuck Sonic Spinball. And if you don't like it, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. But we're just getting started on the summer of Sega. So ladies and gentlemen, much like a nice piece of oak stuck up your ass and you're running around in a circle with it, stick around. There's more to come.